welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you um, a little bit of my sketchbook because I'm working on a new project. I'm painting with bold colours. So what I, mean, what I mean by bold colours is I'm trying to use like neon pink and neon bright colours and like really nice contrasting colours to try and see how it is. Because actually I feel like I, want, I need to practice more with colours and it's really fun um, to think of it that way. Um, what inspired me to do this project was um, I watched this movie called Atomic Blonde and it's a mystery thriller movie that's recently come out I think just at the end of last year, so like a few months ago and it features Charlize Theron, um, the South African actress, you probably know who she is um, but I absolutely love the how the film was shot, it was shot like it has lots of uh, like 90s vibes, like 90s neon lights, and um, a lot of the scenes were shot with like two-toned, bright neon, like like as if you're in a nightclub or something, or walking down a, a street down in Chinatown. Um, well, it also gives that like Tron vibes. You go watch that movie as well, and I really wanted to see how that would work with the watercolor painting. Um, I'm not sure how it has it will come out at the end of this video, but what I've done is I've done um, I've done three sketches so far in my sketchbook, and I'll share um, more a high resolution um, of the, of like my sketchbook pages on my Patreon account. And if you're not signed into Patreon, you should because I just started a Patreon account, and I'm really I'm kind of nervous to sit talk about it because it was weird. I was pissing off for ages, but I thought. I wanted a place where it was sort of, I could get even more personal, like I could show you really in deep how my thought process goes and my and when I approach art projects and stuff. And I also wanted a place for you to be able to post your artwork, maybe, maybe the projects I'm working on now, for example um, in this project, this week's project, you could try your hand at painting with neon watercolours too, so, and you can post it on the Patreon. Um, anyway. <coughs> Sorry, my throat, my throat is a bit croaky today. But besides, so uh, besides that, um, the link is down below if you want to look at it. And yeah, so today I want to talk to you about why people leave Japan. And it's a very strange topic to talk about because I think it's very personal and it's, yeah, <laughs> it's quite a personal part topic but I thought it might be interesting for some people, it's interesting to me so yeah so let's get started, I'll talk about it now. I actually pre-recorded myself talking about it um, when I was in the mode of talking about it so I'm gonna slot that sound clip right in and yeah see how it goes. It's an interesting topic that I, I've had on my mind for a while but I just felt like unqualified to talk about it because I'm not planning on leaving Japan anytime soon but I have thought about leaving. <laughs> I've had had those, I have had those thoughts before, um, especially on like a, a down day when I haven't been feeling like everything's going, gone to plan. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting to talk about and uh, yeah it came up because a lot of my, uh, it's my fourth year in Japan now um, and if you don't know me my name's Natalie and I'm an artist living in Tokyo and I make art and yeah, so, um, so yeah, most of my friends so far have probably left Japan or thinking about leaving Japan. There's expat friends um, that weren't planning on living here long term. And I'm not going to talk about each and every one of their personal reasons why they have left or are thinking of leaving, but I'm just mainly going to talk about reasons why I might leave or will leave. <coughs> And maybe those reasons might apply to you if you're thinking of leaving or have already left or just curious and want to be nosy. <laughs> I'm sure like I'm exactly the same. I want to know, get up in everyone's business. But anyway, um, so yeah, I made a short list and just so I stay on track and I don't ramble on for ages. And uh, the first thing I put on my list was um, better job prospects overseas. So... The main reason that enables foreigners to live in Japan legally would be the working visa. You'd have to work or have some sort of visa that allows you to live in Japan. And most people are on the instructor visa where you are 
mainly an English teacher or some sort of teacher living living in a school I was gonna say no working at a school or a university or your professor or you're working at like an English training center or something like that um, and there's other types of visas as well for the I think it's called specialist in humanities and that's just like one blanket visa that just sort of incorporates pretty much most things um, if it weren't if it wasn't specified and this is the mostly what a lot of the people are on most visas and most of the foreigners are on this sort of visa if not the other types and there's many types so um so yeah um better job prospects overseas um maybe they were here and they worked a lot and they gained enough skills to find a better job overseas that pays better so that could be one reason or maybe they just sort of wanted a change of scenery maybe they've um, like sort of hit the ceiling on their career in Japan and sort of want to change. <clears throat> Another reason could be that they tried really hard in Japan and it just things just didn't work out as the way they they wanted to and that's fine I'm I don't think that's a bad thing I think just you just have to work with what where you where you're at and uh, what you've got the <laughs> The cards that you've been handed, in a sense, and um, but that could be one reason why people would leave Japan. Um, and I feel like under the job bracket, there's loads and loads and loads of reasons. And um, so you could chime in the comments below if you like, if you have any any other ideas that I might have missed. Um, the second reason why I think um, that people might leave Japan is children or having kids. I don't think Japan is a terrible place to have kids. Um, I think it's actually a really safe place. But in Tokyo, having kids is just like any other city where it's going to be very expensive. Um, the government does subsidize having kids. I think it's about 200 US dollars, if I'm right, or maybe it's changed around that amount. So, like Niman, so 20,000 yen. Um, the government will pay you to have a baby, basically. Um, the sponsor will pay like or you can get some subsidy for um, the medical fees for having a child um, it's and I don't know if it's a monthly thing or just a one-off payment I'm not sure but I've heard from friends that it doesn't really go very far and and I guess it depends on the parents like to be honest that the spending is endless um, if you have kids but Especially if you're um, part of a biracial couple, if you're an expat married to a Japanese wife or husband, um, like you, maybe you want your child to experience a school life in Japan as well as overseas in your home country, and that could be your own reason why it's easier to just move or there are options to move. I don't think the schooling is really that bad in particular. Um, I could count many schools in England that are terrible <laughs> but also good as well so it just depends on like that but that could be a reason why people might leave Japan um, uh, mainly for children so the third reason is um, mainly there's there's a lot of people that come to Japan usually that are younger and they just want to experience new things sort of like travel and just sort of experience the culture new language new environment but they're not really thinking to stay long term anyway. Those people I'd, I put as in, under the bracket of maybe a bit bored of Japan. Um, I don't think people, not everyone is bored of Japan, but I know that some people can sort of like, the you know, you can only eat too many sushis without being sick of it. And and uh, kind of lines up with the, with like, I guess, yeah, it's sort of like they sort of, like I mentioned before, they sort of hit their limit with Japan and they just want a new adventure. And I also think that's fine. I don't think that's something to look down upon at all. The people want different things and their people's interests change. And that's fine. Um, the fourth reason I put as well was they, <laughs> it's kind of a personal reason, but I do think it is one a big reason why and it's not only Japan but other countries as well but um, they just struggle to find their significant other and I'm not going to talk about this too much because it's really personal 
but um yeah so if you couldn't find a boyfriend girlfriend wife husband then that could be one reason to leave japan i don't think it's the main reason that people leave um maybe it is for some but i think it could be like a contributing factor and maybe they went through a breakup and they sort of go through this phase of you know what i'm just over japan i want to leave that could be a reason but that could also happen anyway so anyway and the next reason i'm going to mention i think this is the last reason that i wrote was um the tax is quite high especially in tokyo and the inheritance tax is kind of scary to look at i think it was 2016 or 17 i can't remember i read it in an article somewhere and i just really can't remember where i read it but um and the exact details but i remember reading that um if you become a pr a pr is a permanent resident in japan that you will have to pay inheritance tax on any um any properties or assets that you inherit from your parents um overseas whether it be of in japan or overseas and i think the inheritance tax is quite high and this can really deter people and i think this doesn't only apply for japanese residents it also applies to foreigners as well and i think it extends to expats and i'm not sure if it has to be your pr or if you can just stay in non resident like a resident but non permanent resident in japan but yeah that could be one reason why people want, don't want to stay here long term is just the tax being too high and like most of the assets that you gain will be heavily taxed upon so i feel like with tokyo it's the sort of place where everyone's sort of middle class like everyone is not crazy there's there's not a huge disparity between the poor and the rich everyone's generally around the same the way i described it to a friend once was and of course there's always anomalies yeah so but the way i described it to a friend once was everyone can afford a 5000 yen or 50 dollar meal but some people can have it every day and some people might have to save up a bit for it but everyone can generally afford that whereas in the countries that i've lived before there's some people that there's a lot of people that really cannot afford that in the wildest dreams and maybe i'm wrong and you can argue with me on that i don't mind i like to know and learn different things anyway so it's fine um and also especially living in tokyo it can be really hard to save money as well and invest in things so and i guess that might be one reason why people would want to leave is that they can save more money doing the same thing or similar job with the same effort effort somewhere else so yeah those are my five main reasons i could think of that would potentially make me want to leave japan but i'm not leaving japan anytime soon by the looks of things but what what, what do you think what has your experience been if you're not afraid to share definitely leave it in the comments below we can get conversation going and again thank you so much for watching this video i post videos i try to post videos twice a week but at least once a week and i try to post them on tuesday at least so definitely check back next tuesday anyway have a lovely week and see you soon bye <laughs>